everyone. Welcome to the first video in EcoCycle Zero Waste video series talking about the what, why, and how of recycling, reducing, reusing, composting, and going beyond. It's also April, which means that it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. I'm Rosie, and today we're going to talk about where our stuff comes from. So everything we use comes from the Earth. Our bottles, cans, bags, electronics, you name it. Precious natural resources become our everyday products, which is silly if we're just using them to make single-use products that we use for two minutes and then bury them where we can never use them again. We want to reduce the amount of natural resources that we use in the first place, and we want to keep the resources that we do extract from the earth in circulation as long as we can, which is recycling. When we think about our products, we often think about whether they're recyclable, and if they are, we think we're golden. But this video is to help us think about upstream impacts before we even see the product. Even if it's recyclable, sometimes skipping that product altogether is the best thing to do. Rather than a linear system where we extract resources, turn them into products, use those products, throw the product in the landfill, and then start all over again, we want to reduce the input on the front end and the waste on the back end to work toward a circular economy. In a circular economy, the output becomes the input for the new product. So there's no additional input and there's no waste. Let's start with aluminum. We get aluminum from bauxite, which is found in rocks that are weathered over a long time, usually in tropical conditions. So to get the bauxite, we have to go into tropical areas. We have to cut down trees in the tropical rainforest, and then we have to strip mine the earth to get those rocks. So that means that in addition to cutting down those trees, we also have to take the top layer of the Earth's crust away, exposing everything underneath to erosion and pollution. Then the bauxite goes way up north to Iceland to be refined and processed. It's a super energy intensive process to refine the bauxite into alumina and then smelt the alumina into aluminum. Then we can turn it into something like this can and distribute it all over the world, usually for us to drink out of only for about three minutes. The impacts of making aluminum are huge. First of all, we're extracting a finite natural resource. There's not an infinite amount of bauxite in the Earth's crust. So for us to keep extracting it as if there was an infinite amount, especially when we can recycle it infinitely once we have it, is irresponsible. Some other impacts include deforestation, biodiversity loss, habitat loss, carbon emissions, water pollution, loss of land of indigenous people, and erosion. So when we think about all the time, money, energy, and natural resources that made into making this aluminum can, to think about drinking out of it for only a few minutes and then burying it into a landfill just to do all of that again is just crazy. All of this could have been avoided if we had just recycled. Because aluminum can be made out of bauxite through that whole process that I just described, or it can be made out of aluminum. We can recycle this can into a brand new can and avoid all that impact, all that journey, save 95% of the energy, and it can be back on the shelves within six weeks. This is not a hard choice to make. Let's move on to glass. We get glass from silica sand, which is a quartz that over time, through the work of water and wind, has been broken down into tiny granules. To get that silica, we have to make an open pit mine, which means clearing trees, plant life, habitat, blasting earth loose, all that stuff. Once we've extracted it, we have to melt the silica sand at a very high temperature to turn it into glass, which takes a tremendous amount of energy. Like aluminum, one of the main impacts of glass is that it's made from a finite natural resource, and to get it, we have to cause a lot of damage. Glass, like aluminum, is infinitely recyclable once we've extracted it, so as long as we keep recycling, we can have brand new glass jars and bottles without blasting a big hole in the earth and using tons of energy to melt it down. Some other impacts of making glass include CO2, NOx, and SO2 emissions from the extraction, energy and emissions from melting the sand into glass, acidification and emissions from transportation, because glass is heavy. Next is paper. This is probably the one that we're most familiar with. As we know, we get paper from trees. But there are a lot of steps involved that you probably don't know about. So in order to get to the forest, to get to those trees, roads have to be built into the forest, usually at taxpayer expense since it's usually on public land. That itself is a big environmental impact, but then the actual trees are cut down for wood and paper products. Often, products like toilet paper and paper towels are made of old growth trees, which are key in sequestering carbon out of the atmosphere and providing us oxygen. We really need those trees to survive. We're literally taking one of our most valuable resources and flushing it down the toilet. Think about how useless a piece of junk mail is. 
You don't even look at it, let alone use it for anything. And we use precious trees to make that. So they build roads, they cut down the trees. Once they have that wood, the wood goes to a paper mill where they mulch it, cook it, bleach it, and extract the lignin, and then they dry the pulp. All of these steps take a lot of energy. A lot of the environmental impacts of this product are obvious. Deforestation is a big one, but there's also emissions of NOx, SO2, and CO2, pollutions from bleaching, water pollution from paper, and pulp mills. Again, trees are a finite resource. Trees grow, they replenish themselves, but not at the rate that we're deforesting. The good news is that we can greatly reduce the amount of times that we have to go through this process because paper can be recycled five to seven times. Buying and using post-consumer recycled paper, meaning new paper made from recycled paper, is important since we can make new paper without all of those harmful steps. The last material we'll talk about is a hot topic, plastics. Even though plastic is such a common material in our society, most people don't actually know where we get it. We actually make plastic out of oil and gas. We get oil and gas out of the earth by fracking. In the process of fracking, or hydraulic fracturing, oil and gas are extracted from the ground. Habitat is lost to these fracking rigs and affects the wildlife and humans living nearby. The fossil fuels we just extracted are then transported to a refinery to get turned into plastics. At the refinery, ethane and propane are cracked into ethylene and propylene using high temperature furnaces, which uses a lot of energy. The polymer is then fed to an extruder where it's melted. Melted plastic is then cooled and fed to a pelletizer that cuts the product into small pellets called nurdles. Nurdles are shipped to manufacturers of plastic products to be made into plastic products. We can literally see the negative impacts of plastic every day. Plastic pollution is piling up in our environment and you can see it whether you're walking down the street or a beach. Plastics also leach chemicals into the water and break down into tiny pieces of plastic called microplastics. Microplastics persist in our environment and our bodies indefinitely, poisoning animals and humans alike. Some impacts of fracking include habitat destruction, water pollution, water usage, and greenhouse gas emissions. Like all other products we talked about, a big impact of this process is extraction of a finite resource. Fossil fuels will run out someday. If we continue to rely so heavily on them, we're in a lot of trouble when that day comes. Even if the plastic is recyclable, like a single-use water bottle, a milk jug, the upstream impact is so environmentally damaging that you might consider that it was unnecessary and just drink water from the tap. P.S. Tap water in the U.S. is more regulated than bottled water anyway, and it's proven to be cleaner. So, now that we've talked about each common material, it's time to sum it all up. When you look at every product in your life, consider that it's, that it's a piece of the planet, a piece that we really can't put back. Ask yourself three questions. Did I need it? Or was it worth it? Could I purchase anything less impactful? So, could I get a reusable water bottle rather than a single-use water bottle? Or reduce my junk mail? The third question is, what will I do with it at the end of its life to perpetuate its value? Remember that even if it is recyclable, reducing and reusing are what we really need to focus on first. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you at the next video.